Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, everybody. All two of you that have been waiting anxiously. What's happening? Happy New Year to all of you. Happy 2024. It's hard to believe it's 2024. I still remember Y2K. And that was over 20 years ago. Anyway, Happy New Year. I hope everybody's doing all right. And uh, today we're going to talk about some things you can do when you're retired or you want to be semi-retired or whatever, but we're going to talk about that because I think it's important that you don't just fade away and say, well, you know, I'm done working. I'm just going to sit at home and do nothing all the time. You have to have some things to do. And, you know, uh, I think it's important and we're going to talk about that a little bit today. We're also going to talk about some things going on in Pathia. I was a little bit surprised. I just happened to stumble upon it this morning. Uh, and I've just been talking about this uh, recently. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see here. Right now, the Thai bot, the Thai bot is supposed to get stronger in the coming months, which is, that's not good. I want this Thai bot to get weaker against the dollar, but right now it's 34.56, which is not too bad. Anything over about 34.5, 35 is good in my book. It's supposed to get down to around 33, and 33 is not good in my opinion. Any Anything below 34 is just, it's just not good. But right now it's 34.56, air quality 115, which is not good. It's sensitive, moderate for sensitive individuals. It's not good, really. Um, yeah, uh, the air quality here in Thailand and, and the surrounding countries has not been good for a long time. I don't know what they can do to make it better, but... Uh, and then what else here? Yeah, 2024. You know, usually, I've stopped doing this. But when you come upon a new year, usually you have some resolutions, you have some goals, you have some things you say you're going to do this year. And I'm going to go over what I'm going to do uh, this year. Oops. And, uh, and also, hopefully, what you guys are going to do if you have any plans uh, on what you might do. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. Before I get started into this, uh, do me a favor, click like, subscribe, join, hit the notification bell if you subscribe. Look down in the description at all the ways you can uh, support the channel. And you can just watch. Hopefully I support you guys in a little bit of, in a little, in a, in a few ways. Um, I am sitting here in Pacamara, which has quickly become my favorite coffee shop. Uh, I just emailed Mr. Two Quarters Kareen to tell him on Sunday, uh, on Sunday I'm going to stream from a coffee shop, from a new coffee shop, which I don't even know yet which coffee shop it'll be. Uh, hopefully he'll meet me there and after the stream we'll, we'll hang out and talk a little bit. I'll see about that. Uh, so that's going to happen. And then uh, what did I want to talk about? The 33 things to do when retired. How many do you do? Uh, also, if you need help, you need some support, 
you need somebody to talk to to help you out with your move to Thailand, with your stay in Thailand, with your visit to Thailand, whatever it might be, I can help you at AmericanInBangkok at gmail.com. Send me an email and uh, we'll work something out. So that's that. And uh, away we go. I'll have a little coffee here. Cheers. Uh, can you guys hear me all right? Can you can you see me okay? Everything going all right? Because I have no messages so far. I've been on for five and a half minutes. I don't even have a hello. So I'll just sit here, I guess, until somebody says everything is good. It's nice and quiet here. Um, I did ask them to turn the music down a little bit because they were playing some Taylor Swift. Which, if you know anything about her, her stuff is like, you cannot play it. She's, she's got a, a rain on that. So, good morning, Jim. Good morning, testing, testing. Hopefully the sound is very good. Should be a little bit better than usual because I have the... I have everything mic'd up. Perfect sound, okay. Well, sound is great. I've got all these new people in here. Wow, it's great. I love it. I always love getting new people coming into the stream. Um, some of the older people, you know, I don't know what they're doing, if they're going back to work, if they're laying in bed in their underwear doing nothing. I don't know what it is. But it's good to have new people in the stream. Uh, my moderator, two quarters Korean. I have a feeling he's he's awake. Maybe he's not, but he's usually awake and in his underwear, laying in bed, and he just doesn't feel like commenting. And the other guy, I don't know about him. He comes in whenever he wants, which is Mr. Gennaro. So. Anyway, some things to do when you're retired. I mean, it's really pretty easy. You can make a list up off of, you know, off the top of your head and come up with at least 10 or 20. Um, but I've been thinking about it because, you know, in the next couple of years, uh, if I'm doing any YouTube, it'll just be for fun, which is kind of what it is right now. It's kind of for fun. Um, it's not like it used to be uh, hey Tom how you doing it's not like it used to be in the beginning where you know I, I had to do everything and I was so serious about it. I don't want to be serious about anything now because I was thinking about it and I'm like life's too short life is too short to be serious about everything uh, this morning I got serious really quick because we had an emergency uh, had an emergency in our house and it, what happened was I went to grab some dishes. I put some dishes away. I put the wok away. And then the next thing I know, the floor is covered with water. I'm like, what's going on? So I had to go turn the water off. Had to look below the sink. And there's water dripping uh, from, the, from the faucet. And so I'm like, okay, what, what's going on here? The hose was broken that goes to the faucet, so I had to take the faucet out. You know, me and my wife, she was unable to get it out. She always likes to get in there and, and try to do it, but she couldn't take it out, so I did it. I took it out, and she went down to the hardware store. I mean, like, 10 minutes. She went down there, boom, she came back, put the thing in, and uh, you can't call the landlord in Thailand over something like this. That's not going to work. Landlords here are not the way they are in the U.S. You need to learn that very quickly because most of them are not going to do something for you, especially on the spur of the moment. And, you know, it depends. If you're paying 50000 baht a month, maybe they will, but it really depends on what it is. If your air conditioner is leaking, they'll go, well, why don't you call somebody and get it fixed? What am I going to send my guy in there? Um, we had them fix our pump a long time ago. The guy fixed the pump, and the next day the thing blew out. 
So I was like, what am I going to do? I'm going to tell her to fix the pump again? So, you know, that's not how it works here. Um, usually you're on your own when it comes to fixing things if you're renting uh, in Thailand. Uh, it depends on what it is. You know, if it's something major, like the toilet doesn't work and uh, it's, it's, it's backed up, well, they may tell you, call the, the, the sewage place, they'll come and suck out the, the crud. And then if it still doesn't work, then they'll, they'll call the plumber in, they'll do something like that. You don't have to do that. Or if like, you know, if like the electric, the lights go out up above, you change the light. They don't change it for you. If the fixture goes out, you gotta do it too. You have to do it yourself. So, uh, you know, that's the way it goes. They're not on top of everything. It's not like, oh, will you fix this for me? Listen, I've gotta get you to fix my toilet and then go up and fix my roof and do this and do that. Um, a long time ago, I was streaming and I was in, I, I was uh, streaming in my, my my, I used to stream in my bedroom and the roof collapsed because a cat had been up above and the roof collapsed and scared the hell out of me. Then I look and I go, what's going on here? I look over and then uh, inside the bathroom it had collapsed. So for that I called the landlord. I said, listen, you got to fix the roof. So they called somebody in and they fixed the roof. But for smaller stuff you don't do that. Anyway. Um, things to do when you are retired or retiring. It's good you're coming here, Bayou Tom. I, I uh, take it you're visiting, you're not moving here. And I have a video going up tonight. Let me think which one it is. Um, is it the, is it the guy? Maybe it's, maybe, let me think here can't remember which one it is I got one going up this week that is about a guy I think it's about a guy from Denmark who thinks he knows everything I maybe that's the next week I don't know he thinks he knows everything about Thai women and he's just been coming back and forth once in a while for like two weeks at a time and so he's like supposedly the expert in Denmark and if you know anything about, sorry, but if you know anything about Scandinavian guys, um, uh, how do I say this? Uh, they tend to err on the side of the woman, and they shouldn't. Moving there in three months. Wow. All right. Well. Uh, are you moving to Bangkok or Pattaya or Chiang Mai or Phuket or where are you going to go? I wouldn't, personally, I wouldn't move to Pattaya and I've gone over that 50 times already. Hey, Bruce, how you doing? How's things? Pray. Oh, okay. Okay, that's nice. Let me go over these slowly but surely. Some things to do when you are retiring. I'll start out with something that um, a lot of people don't think about, but you know what you can do? You can start a garden. You can grow a garden. You can become a gardener, just on a small scale. You wanna grow some herbs, you wanna grow a few things, some tomatoes, whatever, you can go out and you can grow a garden. I think that's a good idea. You get a little bit of exercise, you grow a little something, you get a little something out of it, and that's something that I think when you get in your 60s and 70s, maybe you want to do. Um, now, this one is something that I've been doing since I was, really since I was in my teens. Um, Citrus trees? I don't understand citrus trees. Oh, you could grow citrus trees. Okay, you can. Uh, you can grow whatever you want. That's the good thing. You know. Uh, I like avocados, but 
Now, uh, one other thing, I forgot about this. This is what I was going to talk about. Something else that you could grow is some Kratome trees. Kratome. Now, if you don't know what Kratome is, I have done videos about Kratome in the past. It is a psychoactive uh, drug that's found inside of the Kratome leaves. Now, the reason that I wanted to talk about this today is because in Patia, they arrested, they being the police, arrested a woman for selling Kratome water to tourists and to supposedly to uh, younger kids. Now, you obviously don't want to be selling them to people that are underage. That's just stupid. I mean, you want to stay on the right side of the law. Now, Kratome is legal in Thailand, if you know what Kratome is. They sell it all over the world. Some places it's illegal, some places it's legal, but here in Thailand it is legal. However, and I'm not sure about the status of this, I've heard that it's legal and illegal if you make Kratom tea. Now, I would say if you're making it in your house and nobody knows about it, nobody's gonna do anything. But she was out selling to tourists and they said, that she was taking advantage of tourists. So she may have been telling them this is Kratom tea and it wasn't really Kratom tea. It was water with maybe a little bit of Kratom or some other kind of uh, liquid in it. I don't really know. But I mean, they didn't, they, you know, the, the article was pretty short. They didn't really talk about it much. But they arrested her. Now, my thing is they're arresting her and it's. Kratome tea, it's cold tea. However, if you put into the tea anything that adulters the Kratome, you put in Coca-Cola and you put in some uh, cough medicine, cough medicine that has codeine in it, that's illegal. So I don't know what the deal was, whether it had something illegal, whether they said she was taking advantage of the tourists, which how would you take care of take advantage of the tourist if you weren't, um, you know, you weren't stiffing them. If it's supposed to be Gratome and you're giving them something else. I don't know exactly what she was doing, but I found it interesting that they arrested her because Gratome is legal in Thailand. And I've said that in my videos in the past couple of months. And even now, when I go down the street from my house, when I go to the market, I go to the market, there's three or four places, like right away you walk in and you see tables full of um, leaves, and they're 25, 30 baht, 35 baht. Uh, and you know, most of these, these vendors have tea also. So if you wanna get the tea, you just go, oh, I want the tea. Okay, and it's inexpensive. I mean, it's, it's maybe it's 50 baht for a big bottle of it. It's when they put in the cough syrup that has codeine in it. That's when it becomes, that's really illegal. The, the police don't go around checking all the Kratom vendors though. So with this lady, she was walking around Patia trying to sell the stuff and she was selling a hundred bottles a day. And she sells them for a hundred baht. You get them here in Bangkok, they're about 80 baht, and that's with the medicine, and it's 50 baht without the medicine, without the cough syrup. But you get the leaves, you can get the leaves for anywhere from 20 to 35 baht per 100 grams. Now, I know a lot about this stuff because I've been watching this, I've used it in the past, and, uh, you know, it's, it's very mellow, it doesn't really do, I don't know, I, I guess if you use it long term or you're using using it on a regular basis, maybe it could uh, create some problems for you. But now I see in the market, I go to the market, there's probably five or six places that sell it. You don't even see it sometimes. They're selling all kinds of things and then you see a bag uh, sitting up and they've got a bag, It's, I mean, it's huge, full of leaves. Or they've got five bags full of leaves. You go down the street, I noticed another vendor started selling down the street. There's, 
one place that's, well, a couple of places that sell ganja and cretonne. And then they another place that just sells cretonne, and then they just opened another one. And the guy's just, he basically opens up, he's got a, a little table, he's got a chair, he's got a cover for, him, for himself, and he, he just sells whatever he sells. I don't know how many bottles the guy sells. So, you know, it's it's everywhere now. It's it's uh, and it's a bit more. Ties are a bit more quiet about it than they are about weed. Everybody knows about weed, but not everybody knows about Carton. So I thought it was interesting that they arrested her, though. So we'll see what happens with that. It might just fade away, and you may never hear about her again. And they just basically gave her a warning and told her, "Hey, don't be selling this stuff." To the to the foreigners. You know. Vixter, what's happening? Hey! They, they, they're nuts here. They're nuts. I can hear like three different... Three different songs going on at once right now. It drives me up the wall. It's just like here, I come in here and the music's blasted. And I go, can you turn the music down just a little bit? So they, they, they were good about it. And I've never had to ask them that, but sometimes they turn the music up really loud. Anyway, let me go to, let me get back to this list here. Um, okay, now this is something that I've done. I said, since I've been doing, I've been doing this since uh, I was in my teens. And that's travel. Once you get a little older, you're going to want to travel with a little more comfort. You want to take it easy a little bit, uh, and, and you know you don't, you don't always want to be doing the backpacking thing, which you know sometimes it's a bit much to do that. Um, so I, I've talked about where my wife and I were talking about going to Europe later this year, and she just said yesterday, "I've got to get the tickets. I've got to get the tickets." So we're gonna have to do something. And she's like, where are we going? <laughs> and I said, well, we wanna go to Hungary and like uh, Albania. And she's like, yeah, but I said I was gonna go to France and Spain. I go, yeah, but it doesn't matter. All they care about is that you're going to the Schengen. Good morning, good morning, Paula, good morning. Sometimes I think Thai ears are built differently. I think that they just have this this mentality that they're out in, in, in space and they're just not even, they just tone it all out. I don't know what it is, but like, I mean, you there's probably, I, I don't even know how many shops there are on the floor. Let's say there's 500 shops on the floor. Probably a hundred of them are playing different music and it's all different. They're not playing the same songs. They're not trying to, you know, be in conjunction with, there's no main music that is played in the mall. The mall plays their music, and each store plays their music. It's crazy. Okay. So what else can you do? It's 33 things. I've already went over two. Grow a garden and travel. Travel is uh, something that's, you know, you can do, and you can take your time. You can travel. Uh, you can travel in the immediate vicinity of where you are or you can travel and go around the world if you want whatever it is uh, all right this is number 13 learn to play an instrument and by instrument I mean I know a, a Thai guy that's retired I haven't seen him in a while but I, I saw him uh, maybe about six months ago but uh, he's this guy that I met in Starbucks uh, probably five years ago, and we just became friends. You know, he'll buy me a coffee, I buy him a coffee. And, but he said, oh, I started playing guitar. I said, are you any good? He said, not really, but I started playing guitar when I retired. And I thought that was really interesting. You can play guitar, you can play piano, you can play harmonica, you, whatever it is you want to play, you can learn to play a, an instrument. And I think that's important. Okay, you can do what I've done, 
recently, which is about eight months ago, nine months ago, start taking up yoga. I know yoga sounds like some something that might be uh, a bit strange for for someone like me or for a lot of people. But it's not really. It is really a it's a difficult art. It's a difficult uh, sport, and it will get you in shape. The one thing I like about you is you take an hour, hour and a half long class, and you're getting a total body workout, and that's what's important. Getting the whole, the total body workout. Uh, if if it's not yoga, it could be tai chi. Older people like tai chi especially older Chinese out in Lumpini or whatever. So one of those, one of the soft arts, uh, you can do that. Now in yoga, one thing that I will say is that in yoga, usually uh, there might be two other guys in the class, three other guys in the class, and usually one or two of them is gay. And they tend to be very, very good at yoga. Um, I mean, most of the people in there have been doing it a lot longer than me. There's people in there that have been doing it 10, 12, 15 years. Um, and uh, horizontal aerobics and tantra. You know. Oh, your, your name is Gennaro again. Okay, that's very good. Can't believe you changed your name. Oh, you're back to normal with the new year. So yoga or Tai Chi, I think it's great. Now the one good thing about yoga is that there are a lot of women in yoga. Sometimes they're older. And I was really surprised, um, but let me think here. One lady is 45 years old. She looks about 35. Another lady is 48. She looks about 35. 30 to 35 she's very uh, this one particular woman is very very fit she's all muscle and she looks really good one of the teachers is 55 and she is uh, she's uh, she never runs out of energy this woman and she's the one she literally never has an easy class although yesterday it was just me, and then there was one girl, and she's like, oh, I don't think I'm gonna come today. I think I'm not gonna go. I already did a class, and I'm exhausted. I said, so what? Uh, I said, so what? Get in here. If you don't do it very well, just do it. Go through the motions. Get, get in here and do it. I said, don't be lazy. And she said, oh, uh, okay. So she did it, and then when she was done, she was very happy. And then in the middle of the class, this older woman, she must be about 60, came into the class. So we had three people in the class. And the lady actually gave us, for the first time that I can remember, she gave us an easy workout. We just stretched out. Um, and then there's another woman who teaches. She said she's almost 40. So I'm assuming she's 39. And she's very attractive. She's very good looking. I don't think she has any kids. So all of the yoga instructors are in very good shape. Almost all of the people who go into the yoga class who are female are in good shape. Every once in a while you get a guy that comes in there that, you know, he's not in really good shape. But anyway, so that's a good thing to take up. And Tai Chi also because, you know, the Tai Chi a lot of the time is outdoors. So that's great. So that's what, one, two, three, four, yoga or tai chi, travel, learn an instrument, grow a garden. Uh, something else you can do is become a YouTuber. You can do that on whatever subject you want. You got model trains, uh, whatever it might be, you fix cars. You can do it on just about anything. And you don't have to do it for money. You can just do it for fun. So that's the other thing. Photography, uh, yes, that's on the list. And uh, I've done it, I do it. I don't do it for money anymore. I used to do it for money for a long time. And uh, 
things have changed a bit in the industry. It's a little more difficult to make money now, which is kind of why I got out of it. Uh, the last time that I've really done anything was when I went to um, when I went to Hong Kong, and you know I was I was also into shooting video and and doing live streams, and I did make money off of the photography, and I've made money afterwards because some of the photos sell um, and they are selling uh, at, a, at a gallery in California so that's good and photography you know it's something that you can get a lot of joy out of and it takes time if you've got a it doesn't matter if you've got an iPhone if you've got a, you know the latest Nikon camera Canon, Fuji, whatever it is, Leica. Um, although, if you're a hobbyist, you probably don't just want a Leica because it's a lot of money for your hobby. You don't really need it. If you are doing it as a profession, that might be a little bit different. Uh, number four, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. It's actually number seven but it's number four on my list. Develop your cooking skills, take some cooking classes. And I think this is very, very uh, important because it links with the first thing on my list, which is focus on your health. You wanna focus on your health, I'm talking about overall health. I'm talking about mental health, physical health, spiritual health, all that stuff. But if you, learn to cook and you learn some of the basics then you can put together a couple of ingredients and slap this slap together something uh, healthy and that leads into eating healthy which is very important you want to make sure that your lifestyle is you know when you get to be around 70 you go hey the end could come any day well really I'm at 61 almost 62 and I think about hey I could have a stroke, I could have a heart attack, I could, anything could happen, and it could be my time. So I need to eat healthy, uh, I need to remember to concentrate on my health all the time, and this brings me to the another aspect of this list, which is working out. You need to do some kind of working out, whether it's riding a bicycle, whether it's lifting weights, uh, whether it's like yoga, uh, TRX, which I really like a lot, but I just don't have the time to do it most of the time. If you don't know what TRX is, it's the straps that you hold on to, and you're you're like this, and the bar you're hanging almost hanging from the bars, leaning back from the bars. You can do pull-ups, you can do push-ups, you can do squats, you can do lunges, you can do all sorts of things, rows. Um, so those are great. So there's all kinds of ways that you can work out. You can, listen, there's all kinds of, they have so many classes in the gym where I go. And I only go to the yoga classes. They have body combat, which is where, you know, you stand there and throw your jabs and, you know, you're doing all this. And I, like for me, I don't, I just don't want to do that. I don't want to do like boxer size. It, it's just... It's not my thing. I want to hit the pads, and I know right now, uh, as being older, I can do it, but I don't really want to because I know it really, it's hard on the body. But you can do a lot of things. So focus on your health, work out, get healthy, uh, develop your cooking skills, photography, write a book. How about you write a book or just a, ma a magazine uh, article? You can do any of these things. It's a pretty intense workout. Yes, it is. It's very intense. Uh, and yes, um, cooking can be an artistic endeavor. Uh, and that's what that, that's what's good. What is this here? Exercise is not something you talk or think about. It's something you do. Well, what I always say is, most of the time, I don't want to. I don't want to work out. I'm like. I gotta go to the gym. I don't wanna go to the gym, but I just put my shoes on and go. 
And once I get there, I go, well, I'm here. I might as well work out. I might as well do something. But, you know, sometimes I'm at home and I'm going, ah, oh, man, I got to go to the gym. I got to put in an hour to two hours at the gym. I don't want to go. And I'm thinking about I really don't want to go as I'm reaching for my uh, tennis shoes, as I'm reaching for my clothes, because I know. Just put your clothes on and go. So I think that's important. Uh, then I said, become a YouTuber. How about you start a journal? You start a diary. I know it sounds kind of, uh, how should I say, female-ish, womanly, but it's not. A, a lot of really good writers and a lot of uh, people, they journal their life. So even if it's just a, a short paragraph every day. Uh, so that they can look back and they remember what was the end of their life like and one thing that I you know I wanted to do this for a long time and I didn't do it Well, I've done it periodically, but and that is to journal you my life and then um, Bruce that's not on the list A lot of people don't like to do that. I mean I have some stamps I have many, many stamps sitting in the closet in the book, uh, in the book thing, the, you know, the little book, in the plastic covers. They're in great shape. They're all like gold foil and there's sheets of them and there's all these different things. But it's not something that I want to really get into simply because, um, no, no scrapbooking. Because when you're when you're doing the, the stamps, you know, a lot of times, unless you're super serious about it, it's really hard to make money from it, especially nowadays because they make so many of the stamps. And I have some of the stamps. These are probably 25 years old now. Some of the stamps I have are 25, 28 years old. They're, they're old. They're, you know, I mean, for me, that's I would think that's pretty old. But they're not that old. I don't have any, like, oh, my God, this one's worth... $4,800 or something like I don't have any like that. I might have some that are like 20 bucks, but that's about it. Number nine, and you know what? I like this one. Let me get to my list, please. Take up bowling. Now, bowling and golf, yeah, you know, you can say they're sports. You can take up bowling. The next one is learn to golf. Um... Gennaro, just, just relax, okay? Hang on. Let me go through my list. I don't need you guys chiming in every two minutes telling me all these different things. I already know. I'm the one with the list, remember? When I'm done, then you can say, why don't you add this one or add that one? Because I know there's some that I missed. And I already have on here, number 12 is volunteer. Uh, but take up bowling, learn to golf. Those are two separate things bowling obviously is an indoor activity you can do it it's air conditioned you can do it at your own leisure and if you uh if you want you can uh you know you can do it with your friends your family you can do it alone i used to go bowling sometimes alone and i never forget i don't know what it was because i was not a great bowler i was average i would maybe i'd get like a 160 average that was my average and one day I bowled at 235 and I was so proud of myself I thought oh my god this is like I'm gonna turn pro I thought I'm gonna turn pro and then the next couple of games I had like a 140 or something like that and I was like well maybe I maybe I need a little more practice learning to golf this is something that Mr. Jono here in Bangkok Mr. Jono is very much into, uh, and he went to play when we were in Patia. He didn't make it the whole way, and it was just because uh, the people on the course were just way too slow, and it was way too hot back then. Right now, it's 80 degrees, high in 93, low of 74, 84 feel like temperature, 68% humidity. Um, but when he was in Patia, it was very, very hot. And he didn't, he, I think he finished 11 holes. And he just went, that's it, I'm done. 
there was somebody up above, up, up, in front of him, that did not want to uh, play with other another three people. He's playing alone, and he was holding up everybody. So you know, John was like, eh. But I think he he basically drives balls and putts a lot more now. He doesn't generally go golfing per se as much as he used to. Although with him, you never know. He could be golfing doing 18 holes and then he might not golf for another two months and then you know he starts up again and golfs three times in a week but it is also a little bit expensive so you got to keep that in mind um, there are a lot of golf courses around a lot of people like to golf I don't know why maybe if I started in it I might like it but for me I'd rather go bowling than play golf I already said grow a garden. Those are the first 11 things. Focus on your health, work out, eat healthy, develop your cooking skills, photography, write a book, become a YouTuber, start a journal, take up bowling, learn to golf, grow a garden, and volunteer. If you volunteer and you're doing it on a regular basis, if you're doing it once a month or something like that, yeah, you probably don't have to get a, a work permit. But if you're doing it on a regular basis, it's something that you do, it's something you love to do, and you're doing it like three times a week, you're gonna need to get a work permit here because even volunteering is considered um, considered work here. So that's something else. The next one I said was learn an instrument. And after that, and I think this is very important, especially if you're coming here to Thailand, learn a language. Learn a language. And, you know, if you're coming here to Thailand, learn to speak some Thai. Learn a little bit. You know, almost all of my friends, they don't speak Thai. None of them. One of my friends that lives in Cambodia, he speaks, he speaks, his Thai is okay. Um, he can get by with it. And that's okay. That's good enough. But, like Two Quarters Korean, Jono, Carnivore Chronicles, a lot of other people. Uh, I know that Soy Dog Cowboy was trying to learn the language and I think he probably uh, has learned a fair bit. But, you know, most of my friends, they don't take the time to learn the language. And I think it's important. And what I did in the beginning, listen, in the beginning I came here and I was just hanging out, going to the bars, just like, you know, a lot of guys. I was like a tourist. I was going to the bars. I was going to the Go-Go's. I was, you know, take a little trip here and there. And I would get some girl and she would, I would, you know, ask her, how do you say this word? How do you say that word? I was constantly asking questions, which probably was irritating. And so I started learning how to speak a little bit of Thai, and then I took some Thai lessons. I was supposed to take 20 hours. I only took 10 hours because I was pissing away my time going here and going there, and I just didn't want to squeeze it in. So I only, uh, I only ended up taking 10 out of the 20 hours. And then probably five years later, I took a 20-hour course where the girl came to my, class, uh, came to my house when I was living on Lot Prowl 111, she came to my house. That house is no longer there because uh, Waitany Hospital bulldozed it. But when that house was there, she came to the house and she taught me Thai. She taught me 20 hours. And it helped a fair bit. It's a big party here. I don't I don't understand it. Anyway, um, makes me lose my train of thought. 20 hours. I took the 20 hours. And what I learned to do with her that really helped me a lot was I started learning to read Thai. And once you learn to read Thai, then um, it's it's much easier because you can see how the words are pronounced properly, how they're spelled. 
you, you just learn things a little bit easier. And then, you know, if you can read it and you can speak it, it'll make it easier to be able to write it, even though my writing skills are pretty poor. But I think learning a language is something very, very important, especially here. Work with charities. Yes, you can work with charities and then you're going to have to get a work permit. That's Jen. What the fuck is their problem? I mean, if they just had some background music, but this is like. Ugh. All right. Read a book a week. Read a book. I like reading. And, you know, I used to say, oh, I can read, you know, a book in a day, a book in two days. Listen, a week is a good uh, goal. That means in one year, you're going to read 52 books. Well, Gennaro, this is the thing. Nobody said because you're retired and working as a volunteer that you have to have a work permit, uh, a, rather a uh, retiree visa. You don't have to. You're retired, but you're working part-time, so you got a work permit. That's what you have to do. You're not, I'm telling you, if you're working on a regular basis at a charity, you need to have a work permit. They will bust you extremely quickly. Now, if you're doing it like once every month, once every two months, it's probably not going to happen. But if you're doing it on a regular basis, you need to have a work permit. And even though you're retired, you're volunteering so you can get a non-immigrant B visa, you can be on a marriage visa, whatever, and then you get the work permit. All right. Now, assuming you have a house, remodel your house. Should I like start singing along with the music here? <laughs> They've turned the music off here. It's completely off. They're like, uh, it's too much. Remodel your house. You know, if you own a house, I mean, obviously, maybe you want to remodel it. Maybe you want to do something to it. You want to, you know, you want to redecorate. You want to revamp the place. I don't know. I don't own the house, and we still revamp it. We're still doing all kinds of stuff to our place. All right. Then I said number 17, which is travel. I already went over that. Number 18, pass your skills on as a mentor. I think that's a good idea. Um, you know, I'm not sure. It depends on what you are passing along. In most cases, you're not going to need a work permit. You're not going to need any of that if you're here. Um, but in some cases, you may. I don't know. It depends. Depends on how legal you want to be and if you really want to... You know, it just depends. Depends on what you're mentoring. This is driving me crazy. Jesus Christ. Number 19, take walks in your area and elsewhere. You know, it's quite easy to take a one hour, two hour walk every single day. You wanna take a one hour walk? It's easy to do it in your neighborhood. You go, you know, you check out a few places maybe you haven't seen before. Uh, you wanna do some things like I've done in the past where you just say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the sky train over to this place in the city and I'm just gonna stop right there and I'm gonna start walking. And I walk for like two hours. That's a good thing. Something else you can do. Then I said take up yoga or tai chi. Okay, 
Now here's the here's the good one for, for us guys. Take up sewing, knitting, or whittling. One of these things you do with your hands. I own a house and fell into the never-ending home improvement remodeling black hole. Yeah, uh, that does happen. I wish Jim was here. I know he's in that, uh, he's in the mode of, he wants to remodel. Uh, he's always doing something to his house, which, you know, if it's your house, okay, I understand it. But sewing, knitting, or whittling, the reason I throw whittling in, is, in there is because it is a lost art. Not too many people whittle anymore. Sewing and knitting, yeah, right, you know. The girls do that, the ladies do that. And, and it's funny that you said, uh, what was it? Crafting, or what was it that you said earlier? Oh, scrapbooking. My mother does scrapbooking, my mother does crafting, she does crafts, she makes her own cards, she does all these things. I mean, she has a whole room, literally, full of all kinds of products uh, that she uses to, to make anything and everything. All right, now here's a better one. This is a good one for us guys. Go fishing. Uh, a bad day of fishing is still a very good day. All right, do me a favor, guys. Leave me a thumbs up. They should wait until like one minute before 10 before they ever turn the music on. I don't get it. It's a Friday. I think they uh, the grocery opens at uh, 10 o'clock today. I don't know. I can't keep up with this place. This is, I just come here. It's just a place to come here and sit, to stream from. A place where I get my groceries. That's about it. But, but fishing, fishing is something that you can do. There are several lakes throughout Thailand that you can go fishing, uh, where you can go fishing. You can go in the ocean. I've been out in the ocean several times fishing. It's always been a good time. I, the last time I went, I went with two other guys. We caught some, some fish. I, I don't remember what they were, yellowtail or something. And we cooked them up like within a minute Bring, landing the fish, we're putting it in the frying pan, cooking it up. It was as fresh as you can get it. There's nothing better than that. I don't care what it is, but when you go fishing and you catch fish and then you fry them right up, right out of the, right out of the ocean, it doesn't get much better than that. So fishing is a is something and actually fishing is something that I used to do when I was a lot younger my father used to take me fishing on we had a boat we had a couple of boats but you know we had a, a boat a different boat at a different time but we would go deep sea fishing and I to be honest most of the time I hated it because we'd go trolling and you're just driving along. That's all you're doing. You're driving along trying to catch fish. The thing is, is you generally can catch some very big fish that way. And we did. I think my father caught a marlin in Jamaica. I wasn't there. But it was like 550 something pounds. It was the record at the time. And then sometimes, you know, you just go bottom fishing or whatever. But it's very nice to do that. You go bottom fishing, you bring some beer, whatever it might be, you bring a little bit of beer out there, you have some beers, you're drinking your beer, shooting the shit with your friends. Very nice. Okay, something else that you can do is get into wine tasting. 
wine tasting, wine drinking. What is that called when they do? I, I can't. The, the word escapes me right now. When you are a uh, when you're a wine connoisseur, and you know, I know. I know enough about wine to get myself in trouble. I mean, I know what a good wine is, fairly good bottle of wine is. And you know, the one thing I forgot about this that I should tell you all, since probably a lot of you don't know about this, but in the very near future, as in probably in the next week, uh, Thailand is going to reduce the import duties on alcohol. So that means wines, beers, liquors. I think wine goes from 10% to 5% or something like that. So you're not gonna have to pay as much on the duties as you would normally. And this is supposedly to help with tourists. I don't know why. But supposedly, that's it's supposed to help with tourists, and um, for me, that's good because you know, I mean, 499 baht. That's a bottle of wine. That's that's one bottle of wine, and that you know, maybe uh, my wife and I can get about two, three glasses each out of a bottle of wine, and it's 500 baht. So you talk about four or five glasses. I mean, that's like a hundred baht a glass. It's not cheap. So if they can reduce the duties, that means the price will come down a little bit. I mean, you can get a you can get a halfway decent bottle of wine for 399 baht, 499, 599, 699. That's the range. Um, well, I don't know. They're not going to pocket the extra because the extra will come off the top, hopefully. Hopefully that's what they'll do is they, they'll pass it on to the customer like they're supposed to do. You know, in Thailand, that's the thing. You never know what are they going to do. Are they going to be, you know, they could go right by the book or they could just ignore everything and screw people around and, you know, nobody says anything. You know, and that's why, that's why most of the time here I just... Try to relax, be sabai, sabai, just like ties are. Not worry about anything, you know I mean? The music, okay, the music's loud, that's all right. Oh, no problem. Oh, loud music, oh wow, oh well. But listen, smash the like button, subscribe, join, hit the super chats. Nobody's hit the super chats today, what's going on? Hit the super chat. Super thanks. Buy me a coffee. Uh, cash app. Patreon patron. Become a patron patron. Uh, I said buy me a, a coffee. Uh, what else? I don't know. Keep watching. Yeah, that's right. Me. Sabai, sabai, buddy. Just because you're sabai doesn't mean that you put up with shit from people. You know, most of the time I let it go. But inside, that's not what I'd really like to do. But I just go, yeah, my, my benign home. All right. Number 24, start painting or drawing even if you're bad at it. Painting or drawing. That's number 24. What's funny is, you know, if any of you guys remember who Grace Slick is, she used to sing for Jefferson Airplane, Jefferson Starship, um, and she's, I think she's well into her 80s now. And she's, I mean, she is an old woman. She's not like, you know, well preserved and looking good she looks like she's 50 and she's 85 no um, she's an old woman she dresses in uh, like moo's and uh, 
You got she's all got all gray hair. She paints. And she started when she got out of music, she just said, you know what, I'm gonna start painting as something to do. Because I I'm not involved in music anymore. I don't want to get back into it. I'm done. She probably couldn't sing anymore. I don't know. But she got into painting. And now her paintings sell for quite a bit of money. There's somebody else. That, oh, Jim Carrey does that. Jim Carrey. Uh, I don't know how much he acts. You know, it is. Here comes all the people. It really is extraordinary that every day I see all types of people. Just in the mall, could be on the Sky Train, which, by the way, the Sky Train, uh, the yellow line, some of the wheels, or one of the wheels, or some of the wheels, or whatever it is, dropped off of the yellow line. Uh, one particular wheel hit a taxi. So now, I don't know when it's going to be fixed. Maybe it's fixed already. I don't know yet. I don't think it is. But, but now, um, the yellow line is only running once every 30 minutes as opposed to once every 9 minutes. Because they have to review and investigate every single train to make sure that the wheels are in good shape and no more wheels will fall off. And I got to tell you, I look outside here and I see that there's the train tracks. They're all on concrete. They're high above, high above everything else. They're up in the sky. And then down below that is the freeway. And then down below that is where everybody walks and they're building a walkway to right here to this walkway that comes into the mall from the the one in the, the all the way at the other side of the mall they're, they're building a walkway that goes from that end of the mall to this end of the mall and they're putting down the the tiles that people walk on eventually they, they put the concrete down they put everything else down the you know now they're putting up the tiles and so I would say probably in the next month it'll be done but I look at it and I go I could just be walking around and I just I just fall the walkway could just collapse you know you're on an overpass driving your car along and all of a sudden it just collapses your dust, that's it, your history. I could be going across with all the other people. They're building up the walkway over here and they've done something wrong and structurally it's unsound and you just fall with 50 other people and you're dead. And I just look outside and I go, you know, that could happen. So when the wheel falls off of a BTS train, then I look outside and I see all this stuff. It makes me less apt to want to jump on a train. And I actually told uh, Two Quarters Korean, dude, I don't know if I want to take the yellow the yellow line until they get it all fixed up. And even that, I mean, I'm, I'm up there. And, you know, people have said to me, oh, I think it's a little bit more rough than the other trains. And I'm like, eh, I don't notice it. But I'm thinking maybe they're they're right. Maybe it is rough. Maybe there's a reason why. Oh, well, if the wheel falls off, you're not going to fall off. You don't know that. That's the kind of thing that worries me living here. You know, is it my day? Is a piece of concrete going to fall off of the overpass and hit me on the head? Boom, that's it. You're in a coma. You know. You're not. You're in. A, you're unable to walk. Whatever it might be. Anyway, something else you could do. Now I've already said you can volunteer, but even though you say you're going to retire, you could decide I want to start working part time. 
You're collecting your pension, you're collecting Social Security, depends on how much you're making, and then you go and you work part-time, and for whatever reason, you're not earning enough to where you have to pay tax, or maybe you are, I don't know. But you could decide to go work part-time and maybe mentor somebody, I don't know. But that's something else on the list. And this one, Gennaro, you might like this one. You may want to do this yourself when you decide to retire, when you are fully retired and you are over here, you may decide to do this. And that is become a barista. You might just want to take a barista course. Did I drink my coffee? Oh, no, I didn't even drink it all. Take a barista course. Why not? Does that sound good? You might you might have uh, some of these young girls that you like so much. You know, studying to be baristas also, and you'll be there along uh, with them. Yeah, but you're not going to know about coffee. So what are you going to do? You're going to hire somebody that's going to know about coffee. Why don't you learn about coffee, and then you hire people. You know, I've only had one amazing cup of coffee in my life. Yeah, okay. Well, that's a shame. Listen, I've got, I, I, you know, I've been working on this, uh, on my coffee rating system. And it's not easy. I got about 70 places. And I'm, I'm, the idea is to add... Um, one place a week. At least one place. Hopefully that, that would that would help. You know, that's an extra 50 to 100 a year. But I am rating them and I don't think I'll put the ratings uh, up online because some of the uh, coffee shops. I just don't want to rate because they're that bad. And I'll give you an idea of how bad some of them are. I went out to a place, I think it was Samut Bakan. And I went, there was a mall there. I went to go see Mr. Dowlow, who's not in the stream today. Conveniently, I went to go see Mr. Dowlow and Mr. Andy Travels. I just decided I'll take a little trip out there. I'll go see him. Uh, Dowlow's wife was not allowing him the freedom to travel into the city or whatever it was. I don't know. So I go out to this place. He says, oh, let's meet at this coffee shop over here. I said, I don't know about that coffee shop, man. Maybe we should go. There's one right, there's one right next to the mall here. It's not far from me. Oh, no, no. Come over here. Okay. Absolutely. The company was nice, as he stated. We had nice conversation, it was very nice. But the coffee was worse than, say, McDonald's, was worse than 7-Eleven, was worse than Cafe Amazon. It was absolutely horrible. I'm not gonna name the name of the place, but it was really bad. It was the kind of coffee where it, it just tastes like mud. And see, if I rate that and put it online, then you're basically slandering them. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to I don't want to speak. I don't want to hurt anybody and their business. I mean, listen, it's good enough coffee where you go in, you get a cup of coffee, you down it, you get out. That's about all it was good for. To sit there at a gas station and drink coffee and hope that it's really good. It just didn't work. So now I have all these rankings. I gotta think, what am I gonna do with them? How am I going to do something with them? Because I would like to do something with them because I just think about it. And this is something, I mean, I can do this when I'm an old man, but I'm streaming. I put up some videos. I got a video going up tonight, like I said. Uh, 
what is it that I have going up tonight? I'm trying to think which one it is. It's either the guy from Denmark or it's um, what's the other one? I don't even remember. I've learned recently that Americano coffees are not all equal. I now ask how many shots. Well, I my rating system is based on espressos. I will drink other items, but that's not, I want an espresso so that I can judge them. I could get an Americano if I wanted and, and just drink it. And across the board, they're all judged with an equal drink. You know, I don't want to get a cappuccino in this place and a fufu drink in this place. The pinnacle, well, I don't know that there's a pinnacle because there's so many factors. Let me see here. And then I'll get back to this. Uh, um, let me, let me uh, write down a couple things here. I'm trying to think of what my criteria are. I've got it written down, I've got everything down, but there's quite a bit of them and I've been adding as I go a little bit. Um, like location is one that's important. If, if you're talking about Bangkok, uh, coffee shops, then the center of, of Bangkok should be the ideal, that's an ideal location. If you're out on the outskirts of Bangkok, that is not an ideal location. The vibe, the taste, uh, the value, and there's a couple others. Um, oh, service. Service is important. When I come here, I don't wait for more than about two seconds and somebody's up at the counter and they're helping me. And you know, I place my order, I come sit at the table, I'm sitting here. Just chilling out. La 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 la, la. and boom, here comes my, my food or my coffee, whatever it may be. That's the other thing is the food. Do they have food? Is it a food establishment? Is it a cafe? Or is it a coffee shop? Or is it a restaurant? So there's a lot of criteria that you need to add in there. And if you're saying to me, what is the pinnacle of coffee here? I would say there are about, I would say probably 10 places where the coffee is very, very good. And it would be difficult to differentiate differentiate or say this place is so much better because the coffee tastes really good now I've talked about Sarnies Sarnies is an excellent coffee place and also there's Davin coffee Davin is the place you guys may remember where I went it was all like uh, it was made of it was like a two-story establishment that had like Roman figures outside and on the inside and then they had a huge amount of coffee to choose from. They had drip coffee, they had espressos, cappuccino, foo-foo drinks, and their food that they served there was phenomenal. They had great food, but they also had great snacks. They had, if you look over here, right now, they probably have 20 drinks and foods. 20 types of food and drink. You got muffins, you got croissants, you got sandwiches, and you got things like that. So I would say this is a, a, a good, the food is good here, but it's not as good as Davin Coffee. But with Davin Coffee is the value there. You're paying as much or more than Starbucks. Starbucks is a terrible value and their coffee is average. That's the truth as I see it. I don't think that they, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't think that they, they think that they are the very best coffee around. Now, if you go to Starbucks, uh, what is it? Starbucks Reserve. Uh, you can get some pretty good coffees there and it ranks a bit higher, but it's not in, to me, there are just too many places to, to make a decision on which one has the very best coffee. It's not the best 
coffee, it's the best overall shop. And, Star and Sarnies is one of those. Uh, yeah, th that's nice, but uh, it's still a Starbucks. It still has that Starbucks vibe. It's not the most... I wouldn't say that when you go there that you're going to have a great time and you're going to have wonderful conversation and it's such a comfortable place and you oh wow we're looking outside and uh, it's just it might be in the top 20 but it's just there's something lacking there that's how I think all right the next one on this list join a chess club if you want to learn how to strategize and how to think many moves ahead join a chess club uh, I'm online. I have a, a, a chess account online. I have an app on my phone that I play chess with. Sometimes I play against people and sometimes I play against a computer. And uh, it's a fun game if you learn how to play it. it you know, I mean, I learned when I was a little kid. Uh, and it's something that it keeps your mind sharp. Which brings me to the next subject. Do a crossword puzzle a day. That could help you with like dementia and Alzheimer's and all these other kind of problems. Now, the, you know, listen, there, the thing is, is that there is honestly to say one coffee is expressively different and better than another. Okay, there's a place in the mall that I went and I was very disappointed by it because it is expensive coffee. But the coffee was horrible. Now, that coffee, to compare that with a Sarnie's coffee or Gavin coffee or uh, Ministry of, of Roaster, okay, then that's a different story. But to, to say, if you go to the Ministry of Roaster, they're going to make you up a nice cup of coffee. It's very, very good. If you go into Davin, it's going to be very, very good. Now, are you going to be able to tell the difference if they just sat you down and you have two cups of coffee and they say, which one's better? And you don't know what the name of the place is. Maybe, maybe not. So that's why I say it needs to be something like a Jamaican coffee, Jamaican blue or something like that. Then maybe, maybe if you're dealing with another coffee that's a step or two down, then you can differentiate and say, this is the best coffee. But I don't know that I want to do that. I'm, I'm looking for the coffee shop, which is a place that, and this place, it ranks very high. I was very surprised because I thought, oh, it's in the top 20. It's a good everyday coffee shop. There are not many Pacamaras in Bangkok. I mean, it's a chain, but there's not that many of them. I think there's like five or something like that. Four or five. But if you want drip coffee, you can get it here. It's very, very good. If you want espresso, very solid. Very solid tasting coffee. You know, excellent, it's very good. You're gonna come here, it's gonna be a cut above Starbucks every single time you come here. And, you know, Cafe Amazon, eh, that's like, you're going with the low grade coffee, and you just want something cheap and easy and quick, that's what that is. So if you're coming here and then you go to Cafe Amazon, well, the coffee's way better here. I'll say that, you know, every single time. Now, if you go to, a, say, a Starbucks and then you go to Cafe Amazon, which is the place that's more comfortable? Well, Starbucks is more comfortable. Which is the better value? Cafe Amazon. Starbucks is not a good value. All right. Number 29, study your family's ancestry. Now, I have done this. I've done this, and I haven't done it in about three years. But I have done this. And my family, or on my mother's side, uh, I think it was William the Conqueror or something like that, some British guy, you know, from the 1100s. That's what I was able to trace our lineage to. 
So I thought that was pretty interesting. And uh, I still have a folder somewhere on my computer or on an uh, external hard drive. My external hard drives have been taken in. They've been uh, failing miserably lately. I lost two of them in, in the last like month. So I need to I need to figure out what I'm gonna do and how I'm gonna how am I going to save all of my stuff? If I, I don't really want to go and buy a lot more external hard drives. I want to buy one, and that's it for a long time. And I have the one that I got from Beyond Trinity. Remember him? A long time ago, it's a lacy drive. And what happens is they back it up on one drive, and then they back it up on the another part of the drive. So if it's a four gigabyte drive, there's a two gigabyte and a two gigabyte backup. And that one is still working fabulously. Number 30, declutter your home. Now you could decorate, redecorate your home. You could um, remodel your home. No, smart ass. Wasn't that you? Joe, happy new year, how you doing? Long time no see. I got a video going up tonight, which is great. We're on number 30 right now, declutter your home, of the list of things to do when you retire. And I did not add, I have, I said 33 locations, but uh, uh, 33 things rather. I'm gonna add the 34th because somebody mentioned it earlier and I need to, to, to talk about that. And you know, if you really think about it, if you had plenty of money, and I'm talking about you had $10 million, we'll say, and you could live very comfortably for the rest of your life, what would you do with your life and how would you live your life? Would you wake up in the morning and exercise or would you go and do a, a mountain of cocaine? What would you do? Would you just get the best camera you could get and go out and take photos and that's all you do with your, your life and if you make money from it, great. If you don't make money, oh well. What would you do? That is a very good question. And I will get to that in a minute. Number 31, take up home brewing. Brew your own beer. Yeah, you could, you know, you could hang out on Soy 6. That's something you could do. When you're retired, all you do is hang out on Soy 6 and every day, that's what you do, you go there. Which brings us to number 32, become a pub regular. You could be Norm. You could be Norm in a BJ bar if you wanted. It's up to you, you know. Oh, don't do that, Gennaro. You know, I, I, I've thought about that long and hard. You know, rescuing a girl. Because I know many, many men who have done that. Many men who they want to rescue some chick. And what I say is, if you want to rescue some... Thank you very much there, Joe. Thank you, I appreciate it. Choke D to you, choke D. If you want to rescue a girl in Thailand, wherever it may be, do it with no strings attached. In other words, you're going to put a girl through university. Pay for her to go through the university and, and, and pay for her living expenses while she's at university. And do not expect that, oh, she's, she's you know, She's 20 years old, she's beautiful, and you want to be with her. No, you don't think you're going to be with her. You don't think anything. You just take care of her. That's one way to do it. Have no expectations. You're just helping her to help her. You're just giving to give. Mentor a bar girl. Oh, God. You know, the thing with the bar girls, they think that they're smarter than you are and that they, they, you don't know their life but they know their own life better than you do which of course is true 
but how are you going to mentor them? Most of them, they, they don't want to be mentored. I guess if you are very respectable and you're high up in society, maybe they would listen to you. I don't know. Um, but I would say if you're gonna, if you really want to take care of a girl, a bar girl, or just a regular girl, do so with the intention of just helping them. Don't do it because you know when you're gonna come to Thailand. Oh, she's gonna, she's my girl. I want to be with her. She's gonna, she loves me so much. No, she's not gonna love you because you help her with money. Now she may eventually fall in love with you. I don't know. But I wouldn't do it just for, I wouldn't do it because you want to get laid. That's a pretty stupid reason. Because she could just, if, if that's the case, she's going to take your money, so screw you, but there's nothing attached to it. Which is fine, if that's what you want. But otherwise, just give her the money, it means nothing. You got, you know, let's say you got the... Uh, you got a million dollars. You tell some girl, listen, honey, I'm going to give you 50000 You've got to spend it on your family and on improving yourself. You cannot spend it on anything like gambling, drugs, booze. You can buy food with it. You can help your family. You can do all kinds of things like that. But you have to do it to improve yourself. And see what they do. Now they may they may very well use it to improve themselves. I don't know. Uh, I don't really know because I have not seen this. I've seen this a few times, and usually the guy was kind of like, "Oh no no, I don't want anything. It doesn't matter. However she wants to be, that's fine." Um, but. Eventually, the guy, he really wanted her. Now, I know, I know somebody who, he helps a girl, and he doesn't spend an arm and a leg on her. I mean, he's not spending, you know, $10,000 a month or anything like that. He's not doing that. He might give $500, $1,000 someone. And the girl is very grateful. She's not a bar girl. She's not a working girl. She's very grateful and she uses it to benefit to benefit herself in, in life. I think that is what's important. That's the difference because if you were to say to some chick who works in a bar, I'm going to give you $10,000. She's going to spend it on whatever she wants. She's going to go clothes shopping. She's going to give a little to mama and papa. Uh, maybe she's gonna spend some on drugs she's gonna go party with her friends whatever it might be but she's not gonna be really that smart with it and if you look at people in general if you get let's say that you win two million dollars in the lottery most of those people end up broke and if they don't end up broke they, they're not sure what to spend it on so you have to really think about it long and hard and uh, yeah I don't know but that would work Sometimes it does, many times it doesn't, because usually the guy wants to get involved, but he wants something back. He wants her to be his, and that doesn't always happen. Now, I got two left. Number 33 is get a pet, pet and train them. Whatever pet it might be, a cat, a dog, a bird. I don't know if you can train a goldfish. But let's say that you get a dog. That dog should be your best friend. You should train that dog very well. And if you are older and you have plenty of time, you should spend an hour a day training the dog. And then when you get him to the point where he's trained, maybe you spend a half an hour a day. He wants to work. He wants to make his owner happy so you got to make sure he goes with you to some places uh, you can take him along with you you can train him once in a while you, you know that's what having a pet is about and what I'll say is well we don't have a dog anymore we've had some pretty smart dogs we had Lala we had Odie and they were very very smart Lala was smarter than Odie 
Uh, we had one dog a long time ago, Andy. It was a little like a dachshund kind of thing. It was very smart. Then we had Doggy, which was a total bonehead. And now we have Sid. And Sid is like a dog in many ways. He wants to sit at your feet. He wants to sit right next to you. You know. So we have, we have a pet. And I would say I probably spend about 30 minutes a day just hanging out with him. Even if it's hanging out watching TV. I'm watching TV. That thing's watching TV too or it's falling asleep in my lap or whatever it might be. So number 33, get a pet. Number 34, which is a bonus, a bonus thing, meditate. Learn to meditate. Practice meditation every morning for say 10 minutes and then build up to say an hour maybe 30 minutes whatever you do whatever you want but that's a good thing to do so when you wake up in the morning and meditate then maybe do some yoga go for a walk come back have a nice breakfast very healthy breakfast relax read a book would you do all these things or what would you do you know you can do whatever you want with your retirement. And that's where the resolutions come in. Resolutions are made to be stick to. They're not made to be broken. You don't say, I want to make the New Year's resolution. I'm going to lose 15 pounds. And you don't lose anything. That's not a resolution. That's a wish. Now, my own resolution is... I gotta lose about seven more kilos. And I don't know, you know, I, I would say it's possible. I can do it. Um, but the three things that I wanna work on this year, 2024, language, I wanna learn uh, more Thai, I wanna better my Thai. I want to be able to write in Thai. Uh, travel, which, you know, I generally travel two or three, five places a year. Uh, this year it may only be one or two, I don't know. And then maybe I'll travel a little bit throughout Thailand. Uh, and also something, and I'm not sure about this, but my wife and I have wanted to move for a long time. And that's something we may do. Now, I'm saying may, so I don't know if it's just a really a resolution or just a wish. It's just something that I'd like to do. We need to find a place. We want to find a place in pollution-ridden Bangkok. Where is a good place for us to live? I don't know. I don't want to live in Pantia. I don't really want to live in Chiang Mai. I don't know about Phuket, maybe, but not in the city. You know, so there's a lot of places we could go, a lot of things we can do. But those are my some of my uh, goals and resolutions. And I'm curious to know what some of yours are. Fee money, Farang have money too much. Save a ho volunteer. I think anybody who is in that frame of mind that, you know, like, you're gonna save the girl, she's gonna fall in love with you, and you're gonna live happily ever after. I'm gonna say nine out of 10 times it doesn't work. Because you save her and then she's on her own and she doesn't need you anymore. She's like, what do I need him for? You know, she may wanna be with you. She may wanna be with you whether she's doing what she's doing or not, it all depends. But do you have to save her? Why do you have to save her? Why can't she save herself? All righty. So we got 32 people, 27 thumbs up. It should be at least 32 thumbs up. And I don't know how many comments we have. 
but we haven't had one in a couple of minutes so if you got something to say say it now or forever hold your peace hello mr. Vixter farm overseer financially this year planted and maintained a thousand rubber trees this year plant 800 palm trees well, that's, that's a good thing to do. I mean, you know, my wife and I, we have land and we have all kinds of fruit. We have some rubber. Um, you know, we, we really, if we were living in the South, we would never, never have to buy fruit from the store again. We have that much fruit. We have a bundle of fruit. We don't need that. Um, rubber trees, I don't know how much we have now, I don't know, I mean, we used to have a lot, now I, I, I think we have a little bit, um, and we really don't want to be involved in that way down in the south because we're here, everybody else is down there, the family is down there, and it's okay that way. We, we, we kind of like it. We wouldn't mind being a little ways away from them, but we don't want to be so close where it's like she's moving back home. I know she doesn't want to do that. And she has a good job, so she doesn't want to just leave that and go and, well, what am I going to do? Uh, gardening. I said gardening. Uh, build a fountain. That would be remodel the house, I would think. glasses on I can't see again air rates have you ever been to Sakon Nakon Sakon Nakon doesn't sound familiar to me probably not I don't know maybe I've been a lot of places I forgot more places than I remember honestly Eh, it's not something I want to do. What's the payoff for the fish? How much are you going to make from shrimp or from fish? And you may have to have 20 different pools. Okay, it's for your own self. Ah, eh, you know, eh. It's in the north near Laos. Oh, okay. Take a gem cutting course or a jewelry making course. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, you could become a gemologist and then you go and buy your own gems, but you know uh, That's very iffy. I know somebody who is a gemologist He is the son of one of my friends and he is I'd say he's been doing it for three or four years and I'm sure that he has a long checklist of things that he looks for every time he's looking for fake gems and real gems and um, he doesn't play around, I know that. And he's mostly into diamonds. Um, not so much into rubies or emeralds or things like what they sell in Thailand, in like Burma. Um, you know. Yeah, I, you know, I, a long time ago I thought about that, but now I don't know that the payoff would be that great for, for somebody like me. For me, I would rather do something like become a barista, you know, just to learn about coffee. It's not for any financial gains or anything like that. Okay, so that's 34 things. I mean, you know, you, you can't, you can't, a guy I know adopts a chick and trains it every time he comes to Thailand for two months. Yeah, okay. That's exactly what he's doing. He's adopting her. He's adopting her and taking care of her. It's like he's got a child. He's got a child, but, you know, he has a little bit... He has some things that he does with her. And why would you only have one? What would make you just say, okay, well, I only want one. I mean, if that's what you want, why don't you have 
one for every day. You know. I never understand it because now what I what I see after being here a long time, after being with a fair number of people, a fair number of women, what I see is that when you start to look at them over the long term, I mean, even a month, you start to talk to a particular girl, you start to figure her out. You start to know what she's all about, what drives her, what, what is she thinking. And a lot of the time, I don't know about you guys, but like, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say I'm bored with them, but I don't want to be involved with them in a long-term relationship. Maybe, maybe as an adopter, okay, that'd be a different story. Yeah, I did say that cooking class is good, and I went to one. Uh, I went to one a long time ago. I did a video about it. It was very, very good. And, and the woman was fantastic. She uh, and her family had bought around five houses. I think it's four or five houses. And they were all right around each other. And she had her own garden with herbs. Uh, she had everything she needed. And then what we did was she had it set up outside to where two blonde girls. Um, she had tables set up outside. She had cooking schools outside. Uh, cook, their cooking school was outside. Um, and there was, let's see, me, my wife, my kids, my mother, my sister, her kids, and there were four others. So there was 12 people in the class. And what we did was we cooked uh, an appetizer, two appetizers, we cooked two appetizers. And then we cooked um, two main courses and we cooked like two desserts and then we had some drinks. And they taught us how to do all of this. And that's what we did. You know, we just had our fun. It, and it was it was really, it took about, uh, and what we did was we we had to meet them at, uh, at uh, what was it, uh, Satsworn. And then they took us, we got on a, a long tail boat um, with just me and my family and, 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 and uh, my mo wife, my, my mother, everybody in our family. It was like eight people. And then four people came along right behind us. But we had a long tail boat. They took us out on a long tail boat. And then we went in and we went to the side canals. Um, and we had to go through the locks. There was two locks we went through. And we just pulled up behind this house. And we were like, well, what is this? And what it was is it was the cooking school. So we go in, we walk up, There's, she took us around, showed us the garden that she had. And you know, she had things like tomatoes, she had peppers, she had all kinds of things. You know, basil, she had just, a, it was a complete garden. Then we went over and she showed us, oh, they had the ancient uh, uh, rice grinding uh, machine where you do it by hand. And it's like really heavy. Uh, what is it made of? I don't. I don't think it's clay. It's like it's like stone, and it grinds up the rice to be what you see uh, in some of the in some of the the desserts. So we had all these things, and we cooked them all, and then we took them over to. Uh, the dinner table and then everybody sat down and we all had our appetizers our main course we made uh, cashew chicken 
which, you know, it's very easy to make, but it's, it's basically, I mean, it, the recipe is simple. You know, you just put in the cashews, you put in the, the peppers, you put in whatever else is in there, the chicken, and, uh, and that was it. And then we had something else, and then we had the desserts, and we had like, you know, the, what are those things called? trying to remember what they are but anyway we had two desserts very very good and we were there from about 11 o'clock in the morning to about three o'clock in the afternoon and then we had to get on the on the boat and go back home so all in all it was it was a good solid half a day and I think it was about let me think here maybe 40 bucks a person something like that 40 bucks and you know there was 12 people there so she's not making she's not making a huge amount of money uh, but she made enough money to make it worth her while and you know she had a little helper and everything like that you know she had this lady that was going around cleaning things and picking things up and it was great Fantastic. I would like to actually live at that place because that's that was how it was set up. It was set up to where um, you could live there and you could have a very good life. Everything is pretty self-contained right there. So anyway, that's that's the cooking idea. That's great. And um, I like that idea. And I like the idea that anytime I want I can make food very quickly, within 15 minutes, I can make myself something to eat and it's very, very good. And you know, I use the air fryer now a lot, but that's neither here nor there. Everybody should have an air fryer. I'll say that. If you're smart, get an air fryer. It cooks up things, I mean, you know, I put in sausage, I put in bacon, I put in chicken, I put in meat, and in 10 minutes, it's all cooked up. You either throw it in the, in the, in the refrigerator or you eat it right then, boom, you're done, that's it. You know, we got an oven, that works well. We usually use a wok. So, anyway, there you go. That's the way to do it. All right, well. I don't know what a Howard Chappelle book is. I have no idea. Build a wooden boat. I, I don't know about a wooden boat. I could build a little toy wooden boat, but I don't want to build a big wooden boat. I would buy a old wooden boat that needs to be fixed up a little bit and then maybe fix it up. You could do that. But, you know, I think about a boat and I think it's, a, a boat is a hassle. Especially if you're going on the ocean. If you're in the intercoastal or you're say, like in England and you're going down the canals, that's a different story. That's a whole different ball game. But if you're some, you know, or you're like in Amsterdam or something like that, he adopts a baby chicken. Okay, and the point is, what? I mean, I guess you could do that. It's that's that's a. I guess I would say that's a pet. The baby chicken is a pet. You know, you want you can have rabbits, you can have a frog, you can have whatever you want. Dog, cat, bird. Oh God. Although I don't see myself adopting a baby chicken, I'm sorry. It's not gonna happen. Anyway. Oh. Well, boys and girls, a pet girlfriend. 
and her boyfriend Spot. You know, I, I kind of understand some Thai women now. Or I like to think I understand them. They won't get involved with guys unless they think it's going to go somewhere. They're not going out with them because, oh, I want to go and have some fun. I want to do this. I want to do that. No, they, they're like, listen, if I don't see any future for us, why do I even want to be around you? Why do I want to waste my time with you? And that's how men should be. You look at a girl and they go, oh, she's a nice girl. Eh, she's a nice girl. Okay, that's it. That's not enough. Unless they just want to have their fun. That's a different story. That's always a different story. Is she for fun? Is she someone you don't want to have fun with? Or is she a keeper? Do you really want to keep her? Anyway. All right. Well... Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know how many ladies were here today. Appreciate you guys coming in oh, and visiting here at the coffee shop. I'll be at another coffee shop on Sunday. I got to figure out which one it is. I think I have an idea, but I'm not sure. And... Uh, Hopefully, I'll be out and about. I'll go to that coffee shop and we'll, who knows what we'll talk about, but I'll figure it out, so. I appreciate you guys joining me here. All the people who conversed with me, thank you. All the lurkers, thank you. Big fun in Little Bangkok. Or little fun in Big Bangkok. Anyway, hopefully, I'll be out and about and I'll be able to be on the yellow line with its faulty wheels. I'll take a chance. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, choke me. Choke me, little jerk and my. Jerk and my. It's good luck. See you later. Hasta la vista, baby. See ya. I guess everything's open now. Well, I'm about to go find out. So thanks again, and I'll see you guys later.